Peter, those who believe in God want to give God the greatest possible powers, and that includes foreknowledge, seems to be a very important principle of, uh, of theism. Yet, a very important principle of uh, an understanding of human beings seems to be that we have free will. Lots of different ways to deal with the problem, how can God know the future, and a real free will. Uh, how do you analyze it? Well, I think that there is a genuine philosophical problem about God's foreknowing the future and the existence of human freedom. Um, we could put the problem this way. We might now. Some say that, of course, God doesn't, strictly speaking, have foreknowledge because He's outside time, so there's right. no fore, right. really. But let's, for the moment, think of God as just inside time, like the rest of us, and then see what can be said about God being outside time later. So God uh, knows everything that I'm going to do uh, in the future, as uh, some say. Uh, so in the war, uh, in the year 1900, for example, uh, he knew that I'd be sitting here at this table you know, uh, talking to you. Um, well, was I able uh, to decline your kind invitation uh, to come and talk? Well, suppose I had. I think if you say that if you're able to do something, you ought to be able to describe what things would be like if you exercise that ability and describe it in a coherent way. So imagine that I had declined uh, <laughs> your invitation. Then it seems to me, uh, looking back in the past to the year 1900, it would have to be that either God, I mean, if God in 1900 knew that I was going to be here talking to you now, he believed it, that was a state that he was in, then uh, that can't, I can't go into a future in which he wasn't in that state because that would be changing the past. Um, I've heard it's just, it's over and done with. God did believe that uh, or he didn't. But then I must go into a future in which God was wrong back then. But that's not, it's not possible for God to be wrong. Any being that could be wrong wouldn't be God. Uh, so, uh, then those are the only possibilities. So it does look like I am unable to do anything else. Some would say, well, that might be true if God were in time like the rest of us, but uh, um, as Boethius and Augustine and uh, Aquinas have taught us, God is outside time. He's a timeless uh, being. He doesn't get his existence dribbled out in little bits uh, <laughs> like us. Uh, he sees the whole past, present, and future once, but he doesn't even see a moving line of the present uh, in there. He just sees the whole thing at once. Maybe so. Let's suppose that is so. Still, he has effects in the world in time. Uh, as Aquinas says, when the Bible says that God did something at some particular time, that meant that was when the effect in the temporal world of one mm -hmm. of his actions was. Well, one of the effects in the temporal world is to reveal um, to, say, a prophet what the future is going to be. That is, to reveal to somebody at some time what's going to happen at later times. All right, there is no future for God, but there are, of course, times that are later than the time of the uh, the act of the revelation, so he can uh, reveal to a prophet in one time that something is going to happen later. Suppose he revealed uh, to a prophet in the year 1900 that I was <laughs> going to be speaking to you uh, here uh, today. An odd thing, but I was, yes, he's God, he can do uh, as he likes. Uh, and then what would we say about my ability to decline your invitation? and not be here. Well, I can't change the fact that the prophet said that uh, in uh, 1900. I can't change the fact that it was divinely revealed to the prophet. I can't make a divine revelation to a prophet to have been false. All those things are impossible. So there is no alternative uh, future for me to go into when I'm contemplating, um, when I'm trying to decide between whether I do this interview uh, or decline. Now, of course, God doesn't reveal everything to prophets, but really it doesn't seem as if whether uh, any given action is free should depend on whether uh, it had been revealed to a prophet that you were going uh, to do it. Uh, if, it's, if 
And prophets, according to the Bible at least, have predicted the actions of some people. Um, for instance, Jesus predicted the actions of both Peter and uh, Judas very clearly. Could they have done uh, otherwise on those occasions? It's very hard. Uh, it's very hard to see how. Uh, so I think there is uh, a genuine problem. Uh, I would have to uh, say that uh, in general, um, it's possible. And this takes us away from free will into some problems in uh, philosophical theology proper. Uh, but I would say that it is possible uh, to define omniscience in a way uh, that it doesn't conflict with God's omniscience if he doesn't know what uh, free choices are going to be in the future. Is that so-called open theology, where there's no fact of the matter open. today that God would know? So God is omniscient and knows everything, but there is nothing to know today about what's going to happen in the future. That's a, There's no fact of the matter. Well, open theism may include that uh, clause, and it may not. Uh, I would say that even if there is a fact of the matter, it's very hard to see how there couldn't be a fact of the matter. You know, Aristotle had thought there was no, uh, could be no fact of the matter about whether there would be a sea battle tomorrow or uh, leaving God out of the picture completely. Just the very fact that there would be a sea battle tomorrow rendered it uh, inevitable. But suppose you say, but he did admit that there either there would be a sea battle or there wouldn't. But, you know, doesn't it seem that it's, if there will be a sea battle, it's true that there will be a sea battle, or it's a fact that there will be a sea battle? If there isn't a sea battle, it's a fact that there won't be a sea battle. Uh, if it's either true, if it's either there will be a sea battle or there won't be a sea battle, then it's either a fact that there will be a sea battle or it's a fact that there won't. So that's a hard row uh, to hoe. So, so how, how do you, what do you do? Uh, I would uh, say that... Um, there are things that it's not possible for any being to know, and therefore there are things that the greatest possible being uh, couldn't know. Uh, and it would God be like is, asking God to create a married bachelor. Yes, I I exactly. You could put it this way. Nobody except uh, Descartes thinks that it tells against God's omnipotence that he's not able to draw a round square. Let's just define omniscience as being, as knowing whatever an omnipotent being would be able to know. Some would therefore say that what you're doing with that analysis is degrading God's providence. Well, God's providence means his providential care for us. I don't see how it undermines uh, his providential care for us. I'm sure he's capable of caring for us as things come along and uh, he discovers them. And of course, he does know an awful lot about the future, even under the limitations uh, that my thesis imposes. But others, I mean, I think the more serious charge is that I degrade the idea of God as a perfect being, uh, an unlimited uh, being, uh, which of course implies no limitations of knowledge. But then I would point out that Descartes said the same thing uh, about um, St. Thomas's idea of the, the um, nothing that implies a contradiction falls under the omnipotence of God. Descartes insisted that if God was truly omnipotent, as Descartes believed him to be, he had to be able to create two mountains that touched at their bases without there being a valley between them. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, I don't think that it undercuts God's omnipotence to say, uh, that he doesn't have that power because that's not a possible power. Uh, and I don't think that it undercuts his omniscience to say that he doesn't foreknow the free actions of uh, future beings because I don't think that's a possible kind of knowledge. It's not a kind of knowledge that he could acquire if he were an omnipotent being in St. Thomas's sense, provided it really is impossible uh, to know what the future future free actions of um, creatures are. And yet these theists, and they're a large number, feel that really threatens their whole understanding of, uh, of theism because God then is not aware of every single step and there's risk in the process and the promises God makes are not 100% sure. And that's, uh, well, that doesn't of course mean that God can't always step in and make sure that his promises uh, get fulfilled from moment to moment as things develop. That's 
of course, the problem about providence that we just talked about. As to the problem about God's knowledge in, in general, this is exactly parallel to what, um, to what Descartes said. Of course, God has to be able to create a, two mountains together without a valley uh, between them or he wouldn't be all powerful. What the people who say that I am uh, reducing God's knowledge to an unacceptable level by this uh, thesis haven't explained is why this isn't perfectly parallel to the case of omnipotence and uh, creating impossible things.